two rabbit snails over here. And there's the one up here on this rock. These are the ones that are orange and black or really dark blue. Not sure the volcano ones, the orange volcano. He is so cool. I just love their big long trunks. And we have a blue spotted one right here. He's really cute too. I don't see Usagi. Not sure where Usagi is at. Today I went to physical therapy and it wasn't too bad. The lady was really sweet and they went through everything and I think we're just going to do like a six week plan for my wrists and my knees just to see if there's any improvement, just strengthening and working on maybe stretching them and everything like that. And so it'd be nice to finally maybe experience some relief in like the pain that I've had in my knees and my hands and wrists for in my hands and wrists, I've had pain since I was about 20, so about 15 years. And then my knees, that started about maybe 10 years ago. And just always kind of like chronic and just getting worse if I did things. Like my knees would get really worse, like worse if I was doing any kind of strenuous activity with them, like hiking downhill or lots of stairs downhill. And so that has really been bothering me since I've moved out here and I've been hiking a lot more. And then my hands and wrists, I mean, it's just like basic stuff just really makes my hands and wrists just really hurt really bad. Sometimes it'll keep me up at night because the pain is just like shooting up through my, you know, like forearm. And that's like if I'm chopping or if I'm holding something for an extended period of time or I'm having to scrub or grip or just do a lot of things, just basic stuff. Um, I have to be really, really careful about my activities and just what I do and try to limit not gripping or holding things, not scrubbing things, you know, for long periods of time or like really cleaning the house and things like that, like really scrubbing and gripping and chopping vegetables and prepping and cooking and stirring. So it's been a lot, 15 years of like, having to be conscious of that and just put up with all the pain. Look at Malls. Hi, sweetie. Hi, baby. Oh, she almost got my lip. Please don't get my lip, okay? I don't like that. I'm fine with her licking my face, but not licking my mouth. Hi, sweetie. You are just big old lump of love. Oh, she just dripped. You, your mouth just dripped. You're dripping. You're drippy right now. Why are you so drippy? So, I'm not sure about the move, like if we're going to move or not. We're still in the limbo stage. I guess we'll just see. I'm trying to stay excited for the move. I don't want to get too excited so that then maybe if we don't, then I'm like, oh man, like I was planning on it and I was all excited about it, but it could be happening. It'd be hard to move my fish tank. I'm just trying to figure out how that would work. Has anyone ever moved like a tank before? Just let me know down below how you did that. What's wrong, baby? And I have to figure out about the rent situation because um, the portal, our portal for our rent place, the uh, the website was down for like three weeks, and then it erased all of our banking information. And so they gave everyone like a few more days, like till the sixth, to pay it and not be late. Today is the sixth, and but it would take once it came back up. It's taking. And we went to put our bank information in. It was going to take three days to like verify your bank information. And so I'm having to find my checks. We don't, Jason doesn't have checks and I have some, but I'm not sure where they're at. So I'm going to have to try to find them. And I write checks so infrequently that I don't even quite remember how to do it. Each time I do it, it's like a new learning experience because it's like every so many years. So I have to get that written out and take it to the office and hopefully it's not gonna be late because the late fee's like $70, it's really expensive. And I need to go work out and I plan on going and working from a coffee shop and studying today and also going and walking at the nature preserve area that I really, really love. So that way I have a full day of just like activities. I'm feeling pretty energetic today just because it's sunny and the sky is blue. So I feel like I can be productive today, which is good. I like it when I have a good day where I feel more awake and I feel productive and motivated to do things. And it's just nice that my doctor that they had referred me to does take my insurance. It's just the person who called me before was wrong. So I was able to do my physical therapy and I need to find a chiropractor though for my back because my back always hurts. 
maybe it's also something I need to work on with physical therapy. Maybe I'll mention that to her. You are just so cute. Oh, her thing spot. And Molly needs to go and get these implants in her eyes for, um, what is it? It's where, it's like an immune, autoimmune response. Her eyes are seeing this like growth on her eyes and it eventually will cause blindness. So we have to put these drops in that like suppress her immune system in her eye. But the problem is she does not allow us to do the drops. Like she's such a scared dog and she just freaks out and moves her head all around and she gets all like really aggressively like snatching treats and things like that. Like you can tell that she's really like trying not to lash out. So it's just really, really stressful for her and she's super anxious. So we're gonna get the implants. So that way it just automatically does it and it lasts a year. But it is something she's gonna have to have done every single year because this is a lifelong, I guess, kind of like autoimmune disease or response for her. So it's something we're gonna have to do every single year. So I hope it's not too expensive. You know, that's why I don't wanna get my Corgi yet because I wanna be financially stable and able to pay for emergency surgeries or whatever, like random stuff like this for my Corgi. So I need to make sure that I have the means to financially do that because I don't want to be someone who is like not capable of doing that and like doesn't have the money and has to put it on credit cards or things like that. I just don't want to put myself in a bad situation. So maybe when I'm, maybe another couple of years, I'll get a Corgi. Or if everything goes well with my real estate license in Redfin, maybe in the next year I'll get a Corgi. Oh my gosh. Y'all, I don't even know. So today has been, wow. Um, yeah, I had my physical therapy this morning and finally my seeds arrived for my balcony garden and I went and worked out and all this stuff, got a coffee from the clubhouse. But y'all, oh my gosh, I checked my mail and as you know, my series of unfortunate jobs, you can go check that out and see how I have been illegally treated and stolen from, from employers and treated just completely horribly. Just, it's just been the worst. So I checked my mail because there is an employer that I had, actually the last one, um, not the last one, it was the employer I had right when the pandemic struck. And these are the people that have multiple con contractor construction finishes type businesses. And I had originally worked at one as a 1099 contractor, but the manager that was supposed to be uh, mentoring me and like helping me and all this stuff, like go you can go watch that video. Um, it was a horrible situation, let me tell you. First of all, I was coming out of really bad treatment from the previous person I'd worked for and he was not paying me and he fired me when I tried to sit down with the owner and have that conversation. Well, this person um, was treating me like a W-2 employee, but they only paid me $1,000 for an entire month of work. And they were forcing me to drive three hours a day to go to the office just to sit there and for this guy to like drone at me and treat me like I was stupid and like I didn't know anything and it was just stuck down to me and just his, he was huge, very intimidating. And he created a really, really toxic environment. And I just did not feel safe or comfortable like around him or working for him and under him. And so I had to eventually just go to the owner of that company, even though I was so terrified of retaliation and not being paid and just like all these things, which I have come so far in my fawning, people pleasing and my kind of like that feeling around people of power, you know, in that employment type situation, I am to the point where it's like, you know, I'm working 1099, but I'm making sure they know that I know my rights and I'm going to talk about it with them and they're not going to pressure or say something to me and I'm going to say something. But these people, I was not in that space. And so I went to him and just told him how it, I did not feel very safe, like working with that manager and everything that was going on. And he found it quite amusing. And he found it that amusing that I was standing up for myself as a woman. And then I came to him. And so he moved me to another location and that's the location that is fighting when they laid me off during the pandemic. They are fighting the unemployment that I'd received when the pandemic was happening. 
And y'all, oh my gosh, I was wondering what they were gonna say because I didn't even know they were fighting it. Like I had received my unemployment and it was like I had, once I was laid off there, like I got a job a few months later somewhere else and I had received, cause I was laid off there in March, early March and I had received um, something through ESD, you know, like prompting me, you know, we need more information, you know, like whatever online. And I was just like, oh, what, what do you mean? Like I've already, I'm laid off. Like I'd, you know, I'd already submitted it. Like now I already have another job. Like I just kind of like didn't even understand what it was asking of me, but it's because they were fighting me saying I was laid off. And so when they said, hey, like you owe this, you're overpayment, because I didn't respond to it. Cause I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I didn't think it wanted anything from me cause I didn't have anything to say. Like I was laid off, it seems pretty cut and dry. And and this company was the one, um, the two co-owners, like they were really young and they were always like happy and like around me, like really sweet. Actually, the girl still follows me on Instagram and she'll message me and she'll like my stuff. That's why I'm completely blown away. I don't know if they've lied and they said it was her because in my hearing packet that I just got, because apparently I'm having my hearing in a couple of weeks. Well, in the hearing, she says, this lady, I don't think it's her. I think it's them making it up. She's saying that she asked me to post to Instagram and make posts for Instagram and I refused. I told her it wasn't my job. I'm like, are you for real? The crazy thing is that I was actually creating posts and posting them daily. Like I, I love marketing. I love creating social media. I was actually doing that even though it wasn't my job. I was so excited and happy. I love marketing. Any company that takes me on, they're usually small and they're startups and I am more of an entrepreneurial minded person. I take the reins and I go and I do things. Like I talk to you about my ideas and like what I think we should do and how we should probably, even if it's not my job, like I take that on. That's why I'm so shocked that that is what she or they, the company, I don't know who, that's what they chose to say why that I was insubordinate and they fired me and now they're fighting this like, wow, 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 wow. I just, I cannot even wrap my brain around it that these companies are so shady and so illegal. I mean, somebody needs to shut them all down. Like I'm tired of it, especially here in Washington. Like I moved from Mississippi hoping that I would have better treatment more opportunities and I would just have, and no, no, it's actually been worse. It's been worse in the construction environment. OMG, that's why I don't, I don't wanna go back to it. I love it, but I don't wanna go back to it. I wanna go back as a general contractor and me. I'm the one of power. I am the woman owned business in construction and no one's going to pressure or intimidate or do any of those things to me, no. That's not happening ever again. Another thing, um, what's weird is that they're saying all these things, but you know what? One thing about companies is when you're disciplining someone or you're trying to fire them, you have to show proof and documentation of this insubordination and of having these chats and conversations. It can't just be pulled from the air of like verbally, I'm passing. I said, if you don't make this post, I'm gonna fire you. No. These companies don't even know how to do this properly. It's ridiculous. So now I gotta figure out what I'm gonna say in my hearing because nothing's in writing. They have no proof and no writing of anything and it's because it didn't even happen. Mm -hmm.